It was cold outside, and honestly it had been for a long, long time. Not many people knew why. The entire weather phenomenon seemed to be localized around Japan. Sure, it wasn't ice cold, but still freezing enough to cause an almost constant snowfall. The reason for this had been suppressed in the media, as the Japanese government tried to desperately fix the situation. The people who knew had been returned to the wider public and were heavily monitored by infiltrating their friend groups. So, what had caused the disaster? A villain by the name of Got Some Eyes. Through a tragic string of events, he ended up game-ended by Japanese number one hero Endeavor in the lower orbit of Japan. It was only then it had been revealed to the heroes that that had been the plan of the villain all along. This seemingly eternal winter made life for you and your fellow UI students quite difficult. Especially for you. You had been born with a mutation quirk that gave you amphibious abilities, similar to your classmate Suyu Asui. Though, while she was a frog, you were more akin to a salamander. Your skin had the ability to produce an oily substance that was highly flammable, but also very moisturizing. You had incredible regenerative abilities on top of that, and was about the same level as a high-end normal. A villain with a gigantification quirk once squished you so hard your eyes popped out and your bones were crushed, and after only a day of barely clinging on to life, you had fully regenerated. You could also even easily climb walls. This quirk of course had its downsides, the worst one being the fact that the cold weather put you in a constant state of hibernation. Two seemingly having a better time adapting to it. And when you complained about it to your friends, one day, someone made a comment that really hurt your feelings deep in your gut. Why don't you set yourself on fire? That would keep you warm. You didn't know who said it or why, but the realization that technically it could work hurt you. It was just so macabre and evil. You broke out in tears and ran out of the classroom. The outside hallways were way colder than the inside of your class. Already you could feel your lethargy kick in. But it was until you entered the outer school grounds that you were hit in the face with the frost. Almost immediately vertigo set in. Your vision blurred and your stomach turned, before falling face first into a pile of snow, humming as you fell asleep with a smile of frozen tears. You were so deeply asleep you didn't hear the crunchy footsteps approach you from behind, didn't feel the blanket thrown on your back, though the heat was welcome. The person picked you up like a bundle and carried you into the UA dorms, where he threw you on his bed. No, he wasn't going to take advantage of you, though he could, now that he thought about it. Blushing, disgusted with himself, he turned around. Of course, the boy could have delivered you to your room, but he refused to go into a girl's room without permission. You awoke sometime later, face covered a warm plush. Mm. You hummed. Yes, you like this. It was warm, comfy, though the smell was off. You furred your brows. No, that wasn't your smell, though it was familiar and intense. Through concentration, Breathing and listening, you started mapping out the room you were in. There was something smelling close to what was probably a door to a bathroom. The smell of shampoo and dripping water was too telling. Like a silhouette, the room began to appear in front of your inner eye. You weren't blind. 
so you weren't really skilled in this. But honestly, you just wanted to make sure no villain had grabbed you in your moment of vulnerability. And then you realized that you were in a UA dorm room. Thank God. Though it clearly wasn't yours. You opened your eyes, looking around. Yes, yes, this had to be a boys' room. Blushing you up on all fours, your instincts telling you to skitter up on the ceiling until you were sure it was safe. Though, that would be ridiculous. Who in their right mind would do that? And so this is how you ended up on the ceiling of one of the boys' dorm rooms, pressing yourself tightly against it as you could. You had voices from outside. They were coming closer. Thank God you were hiding up here. Yeah, yeah, she's in here, Jesus. That was the voice of her classmate, Bakugo. The door opened. There, ah, she's lying in my... Nah, crap. You ogled at Bakugo. Behind him were your friends, Uraka and Tsuyu. Huh. Growled Bakugo. She must have woken up. You didn't do anything inappropriate with her, did you, really? <laughs> of course not! He shouted at the frog girl. I will look for her in her room, Ribbit. A pair of footsteps left. Uh, are you serious? Uh, why would why would I do that? Bakugo shouted after her. She's just super protective. It's okay. That was Uraka. Um... I'm sure she's somewhere. Don't, don't let it get to you. I'll, I'll come through down, all right? Ugh, whatever. Uraka then left too. Growling, Bakugo threw the door shut before kicking off his shoes and sitting down on his bed. He was grumbling curses. The two girls had been up his butt the entire day. After all, it was... Him who made that dumb comment. And it was him who found you freezing in the cold outside. He just wished he didn't tell the class how he found you. Bakugo then fell back on his bed, covering his eyes with his forearm, as he thought about how stupid he had been. It was then he moved away his arm, his eyes staring straight into yours. Bakugo didn't scream, though his heart almost jumped out of his chest, and he forgot to breathe for just a moment. You, on the other hand, pressed even tighter against the ceiling wall, as if that would help. Bakugo inhaled loudly, then exhaled, giving you patience he didn't know he had. What are you doing up there? You shrugged your shoulders. Okay. Why are you up there? You looked away desperately. Why are you up there? You scared me. He blinked perplexed. I didn't know where I was. And you think the best idea is to climb up my wall? Really? Silence. Yes? The boy deadpanned. So, uh... What now? You asked carefully, hoping he'd say something like, Well, I'm going outside so you don't feel awkward coming down there, but... No, this was Bakugo. No, of course he wouldn't. You get the fuck down my goddamn ceiling! Meanwhile, Uraka and Suyu chuckled. They had given up on the search for you and were about to enter his room again, but then heard your quiet voice and him talking, so they just had to spy. No, you said, pouting. Why? You're gonna shout at me or something. Bakugo was about to explode. Are you serious? 
The tone in his voice was filled with pure rage. Meekly, you replied, I'm only coming down if we cuddle. The blonde angrily bit his lower lip. Also, I'm thirsty. His right eye twitched out of pure rage. Knowing he wasn't the place to argue, he got up and shuffled over to his nightstand. It actually was a fridge in disguise. He opened it, revealing a bottle of pink soda. He set it down on top of it. There you go. You blinked. And the cuddles? Why the hell would you want to cuddle with me? Because you haven't protested about it yet. He blushed. Hard. Eyes twitching. So I thought it'd be okay to ask. Fine. Fine. I'll do it. You blinked. Outside, Uraka and Tsuyu blushed. And your next words. And Bakugu's face turned red in response. I... I'm not saying that. Please? Bakugo's eyes narrowed. Fine. I guess you are my little pop jam. He held out his arms. Come here. Quickly and quietly you skittered down to Bakugo, embracing him. He, on the other hand, felt incredibly awkward. His heart beating fast as you rubbed your face into his muscular chest. In hindsight, his smell was kinda pleasant. The boy sighed. I thought you were thirsty. Your eyes looked up at him. It's a figure of speech. Right. Just wanted to cuddle with someone. Uh -huh. His eyes darted over to the drink. So you're not gonna... He was suddenly pushed against him, throwing him off guard and on his back. He grunted as he was buried under you. Smirking, you pulled the blanket over the two of you. I don't remember you being this clingy, he joked. And you huffed. Ugh. No talking, just warm. Right. No talking, just warm. Bakugu's hand combed through your hair gently. Meanwhile, Tsuyu and Uraka were... Completely blushing outside of Bakugo's room. D d do you think right, that, that they're doing it? Uraka placed the hand over her mouth after saying something so vulgar. I need to know, Ribbit. Ugh, I need to know, Ribbit. The frogger grabbed the doorknob, but her friend pushed her off. No, this, this way we have. Grounds of deniability that we weren't here. Don't do it. As the two were fighting over what was happening inside. But I need to know who chops Ribbit. So this is... This isn't you. That's just a weird scenario. But it's perfect. Oh, Chaco, please let me see. Ribbit. Meanwhile inside, Bakugo placed his hand on your back. You know, you're the warmest out of all the boys. He chuckled quietly. Oh, <laughs> did you go with all of them? No, but I can feel the warmth radiating off you whenever you're close to me. Hmm, been wanting this for a while just to know how it feels like. Bakugo sighed. Ugh. You know, I'm only doing this because I'm feeling bad for... I'm saying what I did earlier. Yes, I figured. His fingers gently stroked over your back. I don't mind, though. <laughs> and, uh, now I'm horny. Uh, what? Kiss me, you demanded. Hey, thank you for watching my video until the end. If you're new here, I hope you stick around and watch a few more. But before I say goodbye, I'd like to remind you to like the video and subscribe. I also have a Ko-fi and Patreon if you want to support me financially. And I also have a community Discord server. All links are down in the description.
Hope you have a good day. Until next time.